Hi everyone, welcome back to PDS. Today we are going to talk about the most common mistakes in bad communications. Take this as the mistakes I have made and observe other people made. Even if I'm aware of these mistakes, I still make them every day. So here they are. Hopefully by having this list, it can help you identify the mistakes so we can all improve together. I summarized seven common mistakes. Most of them are actually centered around why we do communication, about how we handle disagreements. We already do communication because we have disagreements, but we humans do not like disagreements in our nature. So we do all sorts of things to avoid disagreements, and it's very difficult to face disagreement with objective attitude. I'm going to write down the mental model at the end of the series, but I think at the beginning it's more helpful to have examples because the examples are concrete and they can help us identify, recognize, pick up the good and bad patterns in our day-to-day -day communications and we can apply them to our daily scenario. Okay, without further ado, the first mistake is we are eager to have our points across without hearing what the other people have to say. I don't know why I had this misconception, but I certainly did. Maybe from TV shows or from movies, I view people who have good communication skills are the ones who speak the first and just be very persuasive. But the more communications I do at work, the more I realize the power of listening over talking. If you think about someone who you feel like is very good at communication and you observe, they always start by listening. They are not eager to speak first. It's not only in our work, it's in life as, as well. Think about, uh, for example, listening to your parents, listening to your kids, listening to your partner, listening to your friends. How often do you uh, come to conclusions too quickly and uh, get your point across without uh, listening to what they have to say? I'm going to have a separate video, especially on this, and uh, that video is about how to influence without authority. So I won't expand in details. Let's go to the second point for now. The second mistake is the lack of confidence in our verbal or written communication skills, especially in vo vocal, because vocal is spontaneous and uh, we have to basically think and react on the spot. If you are lack of confidence, it can result in a lot of bad things. For example, we have bad composture uh, that can create anxiety on the other party. Sometimes we talk too quickly and we are defensive without uh, knowing that we are being defensive. We just want to get this done as quickly as possible and uh, escape and then miss the whole point of uh, having a com uh, communication at the first place. The misconception here is your confidence doesn't have to correlate with your skills. Everyone can speak confidently without uh, a lot of uh, skills. If you look at several of my videos, you can notice that uh, I'm not actually good at verbal uh, speaking skills. Uh, my, I often make grammarly mistakes. Uh, I say I have a lot of uh, filter words. My tongue is flat. And I'm an introvert person as well. But uh, over the time, I start to build confidence in my communication skills and uh, I'm able to speak in front of cameras and have my video shown to the whole world. If I can build the confidence, you can as well. The third mistake is the lack of focus on the subject matter. For example, if you go into a communication and the other party is checking their phone or is focusing on something else, then you know this com communication is not going anywhere. Uh, similarly, you, the more focus you have on the subject matter, the better the outcome. If you are not focused, like maybe you are not playing with your phone, but if your thought is elsewhere, then your communication is not going to be good. The fourth mistake is fixation on a certain style. And the certain style, I'm mostly talking about uh, styles for different orgs. If you go to different teams and different orgs, different companies, do you already have a certain style of communication? Some people prefer instant messaging, some people prefer emails. Amazon, they have a very particular style that is the document, one page or six page or PRFAQ. Some places they prefer PowerPoints and some places they prefer charts. You need to adapt to the style that people are comfortable with. That is the most efficient way to do communication instead of what you are familiar with. Because good communication is not a, it's, among, uh, it's about the amount of input and exchange of information. So don't get fixated on certain styles, adopt different styles. 
the fifth mistake, which I think is the most common one, is afraid of confrontation. Uh, that is natural, right? We don't like conf confrontation. But there is one big distinguishment I need to point out. That is, disagreement is not confrontation. In communications, it is almost expected to have disagreements when you have an opinion. Guaranteed, someone else would have a different opinion, different evidence, different facts, different perspectives. That's why you want to do communication. If you agree on everything, you don't actually need to do communication. But confrontation can be different because confrontation involves emotions. And the emotions arise are often because we are bad at handling disagreements. So the tricky part is, in order to avoid confrontation, we have to be not be afraid of confrontation. If we are not afraid of potential confrontation, we can actually look at our disagreement objectively and don't take it personally. Then we can have good com composture, apply good communication skills, which I'm going to talk about in the next video, and uh, uh, address our disagreement, reach alignment, or at least agree to disagree. Then we don't need to uh, face confrontations emotionally. And because we are afraid of confrontations, we often take detours which would result in maybe peaceful but ineffective communications. And we have to second guess each other's intent. If you go back to my last video, remember that effective communication is not only about exchanging information, but also the emotions and intentions behind this exchanged information. The sixth mistake, which is uh, directly correlated with the fifth one, is the lack of uh, objectivity when receiving feedback. In other words, we take negative feedbacks too personally. Again, we do communications often because we have disagreements, and the disagreements can be about the information, but also can be about the way we do things. When we receive a negative feedback, especially about the way we do things, we feel inconfident, we feel insecure, we feel like it's a personal attack. That is natural, but uh, taking it personally wouldn't help us to uh, communicate effectively. Yeah, maybe if you are interested, I can do another video focusing on how to do this. For example, you can bring an observer role instead of just being the receiver of the negative feedback. Then maybe you'll discover that these negative feedbacks are actually a gift to you instead of a personal attack, and it's easier to take this gift objectively. The seventh mistake is judging too quickly. If you judge too quickly, it defeats the purpose of effective communications. Also, your other party can perceive that you already made their judgment. It actually damaged the trust and damaged your relationship. Remember from my last video, one of the outcomes of effective communications is to build better relationship. If you judge too quickly, you are actually hurting our relationship. So those are the seven common mistakes in our communications. Hopefully I did an okay job with my explanations and you can take these seven points and check your own communication and see if you make these mistakes. Next video, we are going to talk about what are the keys to effective or successful communications. Uh, this is a preview, but uh, I always look forward to your feedback. Please leave your feedback or your questions uh, in the comments so I can adjust the content of my video to make it more useful to you. Thank you for listening. See you next time.